this morning I will be sharing a very special message that the Lord has laid in my heart. I do not know how long it will take me to finish this, perhaps another two or three sermons in this. But I want to start on what I'm calling as when God's favor locates you. When God's favor locates you. That's the sermon heading that I'm giving to this message, which I will start ministering this morning. Because I believe in times like this that we are living in, we are living at a time when we need the favor of God. We need God to come out for us. We need God to stand by us. We need God to walk with us. Uh, we are living at a season when things are not as easy as they were to the majority of us, a season that many of us have never seen. And uh, people have prayed, people have done all what they can. People have repented on behalf of the nation and the nations of the world. And uh, to some of us who are not very familiar with, with what the word of God says, we quickly give up. This reason for this sermon is to encourage you to know that God is a God who never gives up on anything that he has done. And so please, I request you follow with me, and I'm going to do my best in the next 30 minutes or so to deliver what the Lord has laid in my heart. My reference scripture is coming from the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 4, and we'll keep on coming back to this reference scripture again and again and again to see how God's favor locates you and how the blessings of God can be with you when you find that favor. Chapter 3, Proverbs and verse 4 says, and I want to read and please follow together with me in your Bible at home, then we shall pray. It says, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. I repeat again. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. This is such a wonderful morning that you've given us to be able to come again into this service, church at home, and church in whatever place we are in. I want to say this morning, thank you for your faithfulness that you have shown us. From the time when we began church at home, uh, the ministries, and from the time when, Lord, you began to minister to us when uh, the church uh, services in the buildings came to a halt. You've been such a wonderful God. We have seen your favor in whatever we have done. Because you've kept us alive, you've kept us safe, and your hand has continually been, been upon us for the past few months and the past many weeks that we've been at home. And so I pray even this morning as we share the word that, Lord, you've laid in the heart of your servant, that your blessings will be upon your word, and that even those that are listening to it, Lord, they shall also experience a, a, a refreshing word from you this wonderful morning. Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor, and we say thank you for your people. Thank you for your people, Lord. Wherever they are, bless them, dear Father, and minister to them. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. And we can say all of us, wherever we may be, amen. Amen. Now, I will straight away go into my, in, in, into my introduction. The book of Ecclesiastes states that there is nothing new on earth that has never been there before. I'm starting with that point because to many of us, what we are witnessing may be or may appear as something new. But as I was reading my Bible, and as I've been reading my Bible, I've come to discover the Word of God clearly tells us there is nothing new on earth that has never been there. God is a God of seasons and a God of times. And, we, and whatever season or time we are in, He still remains the God of that time. And again, the Scripture tells me it has been there before. So that should give us the encouragement to know that what we are experiencing in our lives now it's not new. It has been there in a different form or another, but it has been there before. This is what the preacher actually says in the book of Ecclesiastes. If you can turn there with me from verse 1 to, I mean, chapter 1, from verse 4 to verse 11. I'm using this portion of scripture to let you know that even in the present situation that, is, that we are in, the favor of God can be or can locate you. Now, this verse, verse 4 to verse 11, Ecclesiastes 1 says, and I read, it says, one generation goes, another one comes. But the earth is forever. The earth is forever. The sun comes up and the sun goes down and goes quickly back to the place where it came up. The wind goes to the south, turning back again to the north, circling around forever. All the rivers go down to the sea, but the sea is not full. Keeps on saying, to the place where the rivers go, where the rivers go, there they go again. 
All things are full of weariness. Man may not give, man may not give their story. The eye has, has, ever, has never enough for its seeing, or the ear of its hearing. Now listen to this. Now it says, that which was is that which is to be, and that which has been done. In that which will be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There is, the, the, is there anything of which men may say, see, this is new. It has been in the old time, which was before. There is no memory of those who have gone before and those who, who come after there, uh, after, there will be no memory of, for those who are still to come after them. Now, the only thing that many of us do not recognize is that those who were before, we have no memory of them. And there's no memory even for us who are here today when tomorrow comes. So what the Bible is telling me here is that there is nothing that is new under the face of the earth. Which, in essence, tells me even the COVID-19 situation has been there before. In fact, I made to understand in, 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 the, in the year 1918, there was a worst, a worst pandemic than the one that we are seeing here today. So these things come and these things go. But our God remains faithful. According to the Bible, this is just one among many seasons which has been there before. When men have searched themselves, men have prayed, men have repented like we have done, invested in ways and also in means which they can save themselves from the danger of the season that they are in, but they cannot be able to really save themselves, that what, whatever remains that is important for man to do is to seek what I'm calling here now the favor of God. Because when all is done and we can do nothing about it, all what we need is the favor of God. Why am I talking about this? Because for many of us during this season, we look at what is happening around us and we wonder, what is it that God can do for us? And even many times we look around and we find no solution to the pandemic that we have and we wonder when and how will it end? I want you to know it is this moment when God shows up for his people. It is, that this, it is in this that favor that God brings to us is drawn into our season. A good man will always find favor and success in the sight of God and in the sight of man. That is what the scripture tells, and it tells us, and that is what we have read there together. Now, let me go to my, point, to my point this morning. What is favor, if I could speak? Favor is simply something done or granted out of goodwill rather than from justice or for remuneration. I'll repeat, this is a dictionary explanation or a dictionary definition of favor. Favor is simply something done or granted out of goodwill, out of goodwill rather than from justice or for remuneration. You do not actually earn favor. You never earn favor. You cannot be paid with favor. And it cannot be done because you, must, you, you cannot justify the favor that God or the favor that you can receive from anyone. So favor is basically something that is done or something that is granted out of goodwill. And I believe this is the season when we need the goodwill of God in our lives. Can I speak to somebody here this morning? This is the season when you need the goodwill of God in your life. The season when you can trust God to come your way, even when things don't seem to be working in your life. I believe many of us are going through a season of uh, financial stress. We are going through a season of job loss. I mean, I mean, I mean jobs, uh, job losses. We are going through a season where even when we think about tomorrow, we are not sure how tomorrow will look like. But I want you to know something. God, as the Bible tells us, God is a God of favor. I'll give you another scripture again, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, a good man obtains favor from the Lord. But a man of evil devices, he condemns. So if we are going to be good men and be good people, the favor of God will come our way. And remember, favor is something that is uh, something done or granted out of goodwill. God will grant you another opportunity to get a job if you lost one. Out of goodwill, not because you must have it, not because you are smart in any way. He will give it to you out of goodwill. God will grant you to have money to pay school fees for your kids and to pay your rents. Not because you, 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 you must have it, but out of goodwill. And that when I look into the Bible, I realize that the Bible is a journey, and I'm calling it here a journey, full of good men. Remember, a good man obtains favor. That's Proverbs 12 and verse 2. A good man obtains favor, or a good man obtains favor from the Lord. 
The Bible is full of good men in Scripture, good men who experienced the favor of God. And, then, and in fact, this favor didn't come to this man when I was looking in my Bible. It didn't come when they needed it or it didn't come because they, they, it was for them to have it. This favor never came because it was, uh, it, it was a right for them to have it. I believe when I look into my Bible, this favor came mostly in the worst of their seasons. And this is why I picked the word favor here. In the worst of their seasons. And I can tell you, child of God, it is in the worst of your seasons when the favor of God begins to come your way. And I just want to cite a few of these men just to, let, to, to show you how the Bible is a journey of God's favor. It's not a journey because you, de you, 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 you deserve it. It's not a journey because you can attain it. It is a journey of God's favor. I will begin with Noah. Noah was a good ordinary person in the world full of wickedness. Just like we've been repenting over the sins of men all over the world and in this nation. Noah lived at a time when the world was so wicked that God regretted why he had made man. And the Bible tells me God wanted to blot man, blot man, remove, remove man completely from, uh, and, and everything that he had created from the face of the world. But wonderful to speak and wonderful to not, favor came into play for this man called Noah. And I can read a scripture for you, Genesis chapter 6, verse 7 to verse 8. It says this, So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land. Man and animals and creeping things and birds of heaven, for I am sorry that I have made them. You see, when God reaches a point where he does, I mean, he doesn't regard anything anymore because of the sins and the wickedness of men, there is nothing else you need but the favor of God. I can tell you. I can tell you. Probably what we are going through is because of the wickedness of man. But I can speak to the Christians who are around here today. And I can speak to you who is watching me this morning to let you know the favor of God is available for you. This scripture completes by saying, God, after he had said, I am sorry that I have met them, he says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. May you find favor in the eyes of the Lord, even at this very difficult moment. Let me talk about Abraham. We know the story of Noah. I won't go into details. You know God had to save Noah and his eight children out of that pandemic, if I could call it, the flood that existed because of only one thing, the favor of God that was upon him. And I believe God's people need that favor in their lives for us also to get out of this situation that we are in. We do not need anything. We don't need science, I can tell you. We do not need anything that many, um, the many things that people are running for. We need the favor of God. Number two, Abraham. We are going on a journey. The Bible tells me Abraham had two impending problems. After he left the land of Iran and he was out there in the land of Canaan, two impending problems came even after God had given him his promise that I will bless you. Number one, Abraham was childless. So it doesn't matter the promise God had given to him. He had nobody to inherit the promise. And number two, he was being faced by the destruction of his nephew, Lot, with the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah which again, as I spoke about Noah, were wicked cities, which God had marked to destroy. But let me tell you this. Even as that happened, the Bible tells me favor came into play for Abraham. Favor came into play for Abraham. We know the story. Two men appeared to Abraham. And let me tell you, these men were not coming to Abraham or they were not passing in the land of Canaan for no good reason. They were crossing over to go to the land of Sodom and Gomorrah to scale that land for destruction to scale the land for destruction. But Abraham being a man of God, a godly man, a good man, the scripture tells me when he saw them, he invited those men into his house. And he said, please do not pass by. Come into my house. I need to give you something in my house. Let me tell you, when you begin to invite God in your life, favor will begin to come your way. Genesis 18 verse 1 to verse 3 says this, The Lord appeared to him by the ox of Mamre, and he sat at the door of his tent in the heart of the day. He lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran out of the tent to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, Oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. I pray this morning that God will not pass by you. This is why I said when favor locates you. May the Holy Spirit as it's speaking to you not pass you by. May God, as he's walking and, and as he's scaling others, 
May he not pass you by. The story ends there, and I'll tell you this. God was able to hear Abraham, and not only listen to Abraham, he gave him the first promise that he will get a son in a year from that date. And number two, he remembered his son, I mean his nephew, Lord, and I can tell you, look at the conversation there in that paragraph, if you can get time to look at it. He says, can I hide this thing from my friend Abraham, which I'm about to do? Because in his heart, he, has, he had already purposed to go out there and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But because of the favor of God, the favor of God, the favor of God, he remembered his servant, Abraham. Let me come to Lot. The Bible tells me when Lot realized that he had lost everything, he was going to lose everything, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he had already lost whatever he had, whatever Lot had gathered, which God had given to him through Abraham. He was going to lose it all. The Bible tells me Lot looked as he was fleeing from Sodom, and he saw a small city, very tiny city. And he began to imagine, if I go to the mountains where there is nothing, how will I begin building up my life again? Let me tell you something. God will not leave you cityless. He will find something as small as, and as little as it may be to begin you again. If you're going through a difficult situation, do not fret. Do not be afraid. Because we serve a God who is able to use even small things to make them great things. He, he pleaded with God. And listen to chapter 19 of Genesis, verse 19 to verse 22. This is what the Bible, the Bible says. Behold, your servant has found favor in your sight. Lot is speaking to God. And he says, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills, lest the disaster overtakes me and I die. Behold, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. It is, not a is it not a little one? And my life will be saved, he said to the angel who was leading him out of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen what the angel answered. He said, behold, I grant you this favor. I can tell you whatever little you have, you can begin to believe God for it. You can tell God, look, I've just little pennies in my hands. Lord, could you please allow me to, have, to, to use these pennies for your glory? You may tell God, look, when I look around, when I look up, I don't see much more than what my eyes can be able to see. Can I trust you, Lord, to take me through this situation with the little that I have? The angel of God spoke and he said, behold, I grant you this favor also, and I will not allow I will not overthrow the city of, of which you have spoken. As, as escape there quickly, for I can, for I can do nothing until you, you arrive there. Therefore, the name of that city is the city that we commonly call Zoya today. A great city that exists today. Because Lot was willing to ask for the favor of God. Being a goodly man, a good man, God granted Lot some favor. Let me go to Jacob. Quickly, I'm just taking you through a quick walk. Then I will tell you how favor comes along our way. Jacob had served over 14 years in pain, in frustration. He was now ready to go back to his home country, empty-handed. Believe me, for the years he served Laban, the first seven years for Rachel, the second seven years for, I mean, for Leah. The Bible tells me he, after 14 years, this man was tired. This man had served Laban with nothing, actually only the food on the table and the two wives whom he got out of a 14 years labor. Then the man says, look, my time is up. I want to go back to my country. I do not know many of us who feel like your time is over and you think I have worked for so many years. COVID has come. It has destroyed my business. It has destroyed my family. It has taken away the little money that I had saved. But let me tell you this. Immediately he mentioned that. Favor began to locate him. The Bible tells me, but favor came out to play for him. Genesis chapter 30 and verse 27, I read. It says, but Laban said to him, this is now Laban speaking. He says, if I have found favor in your sight, I have learned by divination, not even by, I mean, he's using the term divination here because he was a heathen. He wasn't a man, a person who knew God. By divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. The favor of God begins to flow into the life of this man, Jacob, through his, uncle, I mean, through his father-in-law, Laban. And Laban says, look, Jacob, whatever I have, the much that God has done for me has been through you. Then he requested a, 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 a Jacob, ask me what you want and I'll give it to you. And I can tell you when Jacob left Laban, he left Laban when he was loaded with literally every cow and every sheep and every horse and every camel. And believe me, and also two wives, two of his daughters. And believe me with all the children that he had because the favor of God located this man of God. Let me finish by talking about Israel. 430 years in the wilderness. The Bible tells, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, 430 years in, uh, in Egypt. Years of slavery and hard labor. 
for the children of Israel in Egypt. Time after time, laboring in the hands of Pharaoh. Then a time comes when God is telling them, I will deliver you from the hand of Pharaoh. Those who know the Bible, Israelites were slaves. They had nothing. And believe me, for the years they had served Pharaoh, all the three, 430 years, these men had nothing in their hands. Literally nothing in their hands. Can I speak to somebody and tell you this? The years that you have served, you will not go back empty-handed. I can speak to you. I can tell you, you may have worked for that company for so many years and have laid you off. God will not allow you to go away empty-handed. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. The Bible tells me, favor located them. It speaks and it says, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And when you go, you shall not go empty. This was the Lord speaking on the night of their departure, telling them you will not leave this nation empty. In fact, the Bible tells me they plundered Egypt. And I believe some of us children of God, we will plunder the world. We will plunder those that we have served. We will plunder those that actually gave, gave little to us and denied us our wage. This is what happened to Israel. I can go on and on and on because we have so many other scriptures in the Bible that talk about favor. But the most favorite scripture comes to me in the New Testament about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary was a young, beautiful young virgin, a girl virgin among many other women, other young girls that were waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Bible tells me Isaiah had prophesied, behold, a virgin shall give birth. And I'm sure all the virgins of, of, in the times of Mary were, were, I mean, they were just wishing, I wish I could be one, or I, I could be the one that would be used to bring forth the Messiah. But God located Mary. In the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 30, the Bible says, and the angel said to her, that is to Mary, the woman is doing her business over working, I believe she was in the house, and the angel of God appears to her. And look at the words of the angel. The angel says, do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. Believe me, I do not know what you've been waiting for in your life. Some of us here, we've been believing God for marriages. Some of us have been believing God for spouses. There could be others who are believing God for their careers. There could be some of us here who have been trusting God for promotions in their places of work. Others are being promoted, you are remaining there. Can I speak this word to you? Do not be afraid, my brother. Do not be my afraid, my sister. Because you have found favor with God. And finally, let me talk about the church. The church. People do not know this. And this is where we have messed up as the church of Jesus Christ. And especially in a season like the one we are in right now. Believe me, when Jesus came, Jesus came because the favor of God had been revealed to us. This is why the Bible tells us the glory of God had been revealed to us. I love the scripture in the, Luke, the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 to verse 20. When the Lord Jesus was declaring his statement of mission, what is it that he was coming to do? They gave him this book of the prophet Isaiah, and he opens and finds the place that is written, and he begins to read, and please hear me read this portion of scripture. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Then he says, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. I, I, I think that one, we do it very well in the church. Then he went further to say, to set me to proclaim liberty, to the captives, deliverance. We are doing it very well. Then he goes further to say, and recovering of sight to the blind. The healing that we all talk about every time. Then he says, and to set at liberty those who are actually oppressed. Again, deliverance here. But we forget one thing that Jesus mentioned. And I believe this is the thing that the church ought to hear. And the message that we ought to preach to the church at this particular moment. He said, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Hear me, child of God. This is not the rapture. No, no, no. I'm not, Jesus didn't mean the rapture here. He was talking about the favor of God revealed to man. Meaning whatever it is, you are a child of God. Meaning the covenant he made with Abraham is your covenant. It's your covenant also. Meaning the promise he gave to Adam in the Garden of Eden is your promise. What the church needs today is the favor of God. In the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, we can believe God for his favor to flow through us. We can believe God for his favor to be revealed in our lives. That every one of us who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation of the soul, not only that, but also salvation of all that God has given to us. Our businesses, our families, you know, our, 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 our jobs, our children, our spouses, 
our schools, and whatever it is that we are trusting God for. May the Lord Jesus bring deliverance in those areas of our lives that we are struggling with. And this cannot happen without proclaiming the favor of God. I'm here this morning to proclaim to you the favor of God, the acceptable year of the Lord, the favor of the Lord. I believe this coronavirus pandemic is here to, for us to declare the favor of God and the blessings of God. Allow me to finish in the next few minutes on how does favor come? Because it's easy for me to talk this just like a, a, a rhetoric and then it ends like that. But hear me right here. How does favor come? How does favor come? How, does God, how do we draw favor to ourselves? Favor comes when man trusts in God with all his heart. And I repeat again, favor doesn't just come because you were born again. Huh? No, we've been talking about the life of God in us in the last series of teachings. We've been talking about being a spiritual man. Now hear me right, child of God. Favor comes when we fully and totally trust in God. All the examples which I have given above have only one thing in common. The only one thing in common is that all these men attracted God because of the character that they lived. Look at all these men, beginning with Noah. Come to Abraham. Even look at Lot. The Bible calls him Russia's Lot in the book of Peter. Look at these men that we have mentioned about here, Jacob and Mary. These were people that lived a good life. That's why the Bible tells me a good man attracts the favor of God in his life. And you will say, Pastor Mlema, where is it that you, it's written in the Bible that when I trust God with the whole of my life, then the favor of God comes into my life? I can tell you where I, the first scripture we started with is the same, same scripture that will help you to understand God will always reward you if you fully trust in him. If you fully trust in him. Favor always comes when men acknowledge that God is the only way of obtaining favor for their blessings. Proverbs chapter 3, we go back there again. And I'm going to read you from verse 1 to verse 11. And that scripture which I read will be found in the middle of these scriptures which I'm reading here. And I'm concluding with this portion of scriptures. It says this, and hear me. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's how favor comes. Trust the Lord with all your heart. How much of you trust in God? Let me ask you, even as you take audit of your life, as you repent on behalf of others, as you do all what you can to evoke God's blessings in this situation, how much of you do you trust in God? It says here, trust the Lord with all your heart. My son, do not forget my teaching. Then he says, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of your life and peace they, they will add to you. Then he says, let not steadfast love and, faithful, and, faithful, and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Hear me. Righteousness be, should be written. Faithfulness should be written. Steadfastness should be written. The Bible tells us on the tablets of our heart. Then he says, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and in the sight of man. The scripture that is our reference scripture connects with those things that I've read up there. It would not make any meaning if I talked about favor without telling you why the speaker or why the writer of that portion of scripture mentioned and said, so will you find favor and good success in the sight of God and in the sight of man. He doesn't end there. He says, again, trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Now listen, child of God, GCI. Listen, the people are listening to me this morning. Trust the Lord with all your heart. All your heart. This is a man who believes God, a man who trusts in God, a man who can do nothing without the blessings of God. Think about Noah. The Bible tells me Noah was a righteous man. Think about Abraham. The Bible calls him the father of faith. Look at Jacob, a man who received favor even when he was being born. A man, believe me, some people may say Jacob is told his brother's birthright. It was ordained from the beginning, I can tell you. And Jacob was so aggressive in fulfilling God's purpose for his life that even at some point he fought with an, an angel. And he said, I will not leave you until you bless me. He fought with God, the Bible speaks. So he says here, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. I know these are scriptures that we, we quote every time, but we never connect them with their true meaning. Hear me right here. In all your ways, 
acknowledge him. How much of your ways do you acknowledge Jesus? How much of your ways do you acknowledge him? Is it only when you've lost your job, that's when you run to church for prayer? I know even after this COVID thing, somebody was telling me, people will not come to church, they will have been used to, to seeing church on television. But I want you to know something, friend, it, it will take only those who are spiritual to understand this is a situation that is temporary. We must go back to what we were from the beginning. Hear me this right. He says, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Plenty, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be wary of his reproach. This is what draws the favor of God in your life. And I can tell you, go look for anything else beside what I've read for you here and you will never attract God's favor in your life. Believe me, the men that I've spoken about here that I've given examples over were men who walked literally in the things that we have read in this Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 11. I believe this was a wise man guiding us on how we can be able to draw God's favor in our lives. Allow me in conclusion to say this. Favor produces longevity in this scripture. Produces longevity. Produces peace. It brings healing to your flesh. It refreshes your bones. It brings forth wealth. And it brings plenty. This is why I believe favor, favor leads you to prosperity. That's why I believe any man who was favored with God, anybody who went through the favor of God, that man was successful. Listen to any person in the Bible. I cited a few. But go to the whole Bible. It's full of men who enjoyed the favor of God. Because these men simply were fruitful in whatever they did. Fruitful in whatever they did. And they multiplied in whatever they did. Favor produces fruitfulness. And it also produces multiplication. I will explore fruitfulness that favor produces in my next sermon. I want to say, may the Lord help you, even as you look to him at this very difficult time, that we may seek for his favor, seek for his grace. I'm told the meaning of the word grace is unmerited favor. When favor goes beyond where it is, then grace is revealed to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not die, but have everlasting life unmerited favor. And that's the grace which God is revealing to us at this very particular time. I, will, I want to pray together with you and just ask God's blessings upon your life as we look to him in this very difficult season, but we know God is with us and God will continue being with us. Remember, favor is revealed in difficult times. When it doesn't appear like it's happening, that's when the favor of God comes our way. Thank you for hearing God's word this morning and thank you for being obedient. Walk in his ways, believe him, totally trust him and his favor will come your way. Our father, we thank you this morning. So grateful indeed for allowing us to hear your word and for giving us the opportunity to know that favor is that which Lord you give us freely. We do not get it because we deserve it. We get it because you love us. We get favor because you have simply given yourself to us. I pray this morning that, Lord, you will speak to your people, that we may be able to know how do we get this unmerited favor, even in the world that is wicked, like the world of Noah, because this man loved you, your favor was drawn to him. And out of your anger, when you wanted to destroy the world, you looked at Noah, a godly man, a goodly man, and you had mercy on him, and you allowed your grace and your favor to come his way. Locate us this morning, Lord. If there be somebody in our midst who needs this favor, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord, you will locate that one, that man and that woman that has been going through so much difficult moments and difficult times at this season. Let your favor flow to that particular individual and let your blessings be upon them. I give you the praise, Lord, and I give you the glory. And I believe, Father, you are hearing our prayer and you are answering our prayer. Thank you for GCI. Thank you for members of our church. Thank you for our friends, Lord. Thank you for those who've tuned in. 
Lord, thank you for everyone who is watching and who has been watching and following this service. Father, I bless them. I bless them. I bless them. I bless them. May your favor flow in their lives to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.